Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town, and today I am making a video on creature design. Um, but unlike a previous video I've done on creature design, I'm going to be focusing on uh, animal designs and basically trying to create your own fauna within a fantasy universe. And if it would be fun for you guys, um, you can actually do the creature design challenges along with me if you'd like, and you know, if your sketchbook's nearby. So I'm starting off with a really helpful exercise where I just take two animals randomly generated so I couldn't cherry pick my favorites and um, the first ones that I got were a bison and a jackal so I'm starting off with these and for this first one I'm just going to try to combine the two into a unique animal without doing anything else. So the first thing that I did was I looked at the unique details of both animals, including the bison's horns and the jackal's big ears. Um, I knew that blending the two together were going to have some challenges and some interesting choices to make because a jackal is a carnivore and a bison is an herbivore. And because of that dietary difference, the animals have very different um, ways that they evolved. So for example, a carnivore typically has its eyes on the front of its face so it can see prey very easily, and herbivores usually have their eyes on the side of their head so that they can see predators more easily. So um, I knew right away I was going to have to make a decision about that. So uh, basically I just tried to, as I was designing, balance out any details with the other animal anytime it was looking too close to one or the other. So um, it was starting off looking a bit too much like a jackal because I took the main body shape of a jackal so I added this big woolly sort of mane around its neck um, to be, be more reminiscent of the bushy hair of a bison and I also added of course the horns and I chose to put the eyes on the side of the head. So um, as I'm working on this, uh, you see I flipped it over. That's something I kind of fell out of the habit of doing, but I think it's a really good habit to keep, so I'm trying to get back into that. It just helps you see the mistakes that you made and make little adjustments, and I like to do that right after I finish this sketch because then you can sort of smoothly change um, the, the little problems that you find without having to actually erase anything. You just change it as you're doing the inking. I also gave it a little bison beard because I thought that that was cute and it makes it look kind of wise. I'm not really sure. Um, it's, it's interesting how the character of this, this animal sort of came out as I was designing it. So um, as you can see, I'm, I also gave it cloven hooves at the bottom and carried that furry bison hair all the way down the four, four legs, um, which I toned down in the back. It gives it kind of a lion-like um, silhouette, which I thought was really interesting. I also gave it long whiskers like the jackal. And um, I also gave it a jackal's tail. So once I'm moving into colors, I knew that I was going to have a relatively easy time because one of the things that these animals do have in common is that they have very similar color schemes. They both have sort of beige and white areas and they both have dark brown areas. And I actually did all the line art in a dark ruddy brown because I thought it would make the whole drawing look a little softer. So um, I'm actually sampling a bunch of colors from the pictures. You can see me doing that really quickly here. And luckily, even though I'm sampling pretty equally from both, it's looking like a very unified and easy to work with color palette. It's a lot of real neutrals, lots of tans, taupes, and dark browns. So as you can see in both the images, they really share a lot of colors together. So I'm basically just blocking them in really um, quickly with the paint bucket tool and just trying to get a, a vibe for what sort of coloration I would like the best. Um, I tried to take a little bit more color cues from the bison because in the end I still think it looks a little bit more heavy on the jackal. Um, and then I started blending in all my shading and little accent colors so that it looks a little softer and a little more natural, I guess. So there's the first creature done. I'm actually quite happy with this one. I think it looks different enough from both of them to look like its own little creature. And it has little elements of an other animals that I didn't even intend, which is kind of cool. Though if I was to keep designing this creature further, I would probably try to think more about what kind of prey it would have and what it would eat and make um, little changes here and there based on the lifestyle that I picture it having. But I definitely think it's a good starting point. Okay, now that that one's done, it's time to try my luck one more time, and this time I got a leopard and an aardvark. They're a little bit closer because aardvarks are insectivores and leopards are obligate carnivores, but they're still pretty different. So I knew I had to include that long, long snout, and immediately this one started to look really, really funny because um, build-wise, 
they are they are very different once again and aardvarks are kind of an awkward looking animal in general uh, so I knew I was gonna really enjoy this one so I gave it that distinctive leopard eye um, it looks like it has beautiful eyeliner that's kind of running down its nose a little bit and that looks extra dramatic when you have such a lovely long nose um, and I <laughs> tried to use mostly the aardvarks body shape which is a very strange sloping sort of body shape it basically looks like an art student who's done an all-nighter over their tablet. But anyway, I had this jaguar tongue already sticking out, which is perfect, and so I definitely included that. I also gave it a little awkward wave because it was looking awkward enough that it kind of needed some kind of awkward pose. So I did some sparse leopard spots. I didn't want to go overboard because it is a blend with this very non-spotted aardvark. Also because putting that many spots on is super time intensive and I didn't want to do it. Uh, I kept the beautiful br bright blue eyes in because I thought that they were too pretty to ignore. And um, here I wanted to do a little more stylization. I actually already started that with the much larger eye. And this is how I'm changing it from the last one. Basically I'm just letting myself not only blend the two, but also do little things that show a little bit more of my... Um, my own spin on what this creature could look like. So I took a soft painterly brush and I just started putting in these kind of crazy unnatural colors. I dampened them down with browns but I tried to keep a really warm pinkish color throughout and I tried to just give it um, some sort of white areas like the leopard does. Um, I also gave it a cute sort of blush and um, basically just messed around with all the values and painting around on the body and face so that it looks a little bit more dimensional and a little bit more um, interesting. I did some shading with a mauve kind of color that makes it look even pinker than before and um, I'm just sort of blending everything together until it looks like a beautiful natural painting of a some kind of real animal. I don't know how this creature would survive in the wild with those crazy jaguar fangs and the anteater or aardvark um, face, but uh, sure, I'm sure there'd be a way to figure it out. Maybe, actually, wait, um, I think this would be the type of animal that would eat maybe like little voles and burrowing animals. It could use that anteater tongue to get um, slightly larger animals that go into burrows instead of just ants, and maybe that would be useful to an, a carnivore like a leopard. I'll do one more randomization, and this time I got a koala and a heart beast. Um, another bison-like horned animal, and then a, well, a koala you all know and love. Um, so I wanted to add even more, other than just letting myself stylize the creature a little bit more, I also wanted to add an element on top of that. So if you've seen the most recent Star Wars film, you probably saw those little foxes that are just basically foxes made out of ice. Um, so you can see that this is something that professional character designers or creature designers do use. Um, so I'm going to try to apply that to this creature. So I will make a koala heart beast combination and do my own stylization. And and add the element of fire. So I knew I wanted to use that sort of sheepish koala body posture and the chubby koala body. Um, and so I would be required to use a lot of elements of the heart beast on the face. Um, if I'm mispronouncing that animal, by the way, I'm, I'm very sorry. That's what it, it looks like it would be pronounced. I gave it goat kind of eyes because I imagine that that's the type of eyes this animal would have. Um, and I had to keep the koala ears because they're just too cute. Um, I shortened up the snout quite a bit because I just couldn't picture it looking even remotely okay on such a short stubby body, but I did keep the nose and mouth of that type of animal. Um, I also did those lovely heart-shaped horns that we see on the heart beast, and I added some wings just to see how it would look. I wanted it to look kind of awkward and funny. This is by far my most mis mismatched character. And um, on top of everything, I had to add this element on top. Um, so I knew it was going to be looking a little weird by the end. I realized it looks a lot like a Neopet, actually. <laughs> I wonder if, um, if that's how Neopets were, were generally designed, was just mashing different animals together. I wouldn't be too surprised. It is a tried and true method. So I used a lot of the element in the coloration, especially because I was a little tired of all these neutrals. So I tried to just be inspired by, um, you know, the colors of fire and the colors of coal and whatnot. 
and um, I spent a lot of time actually trying to make the colors look good and super glowy, um, like this creature is actually putting off some light from the, the fiery looking parts of its body. This is by far the most fantasy-like animal, I would say. Um, it looks the least like a real animal that could actually exist, and it actually looks a little bit satanic with all this fire and, uh, and goat-looking um, elements, so that was kind of interesting. <laughs> it looks like the most evil koala that could possibly exist. Um, so that's, yeah, <laughs> that's a little interesting. Um, I had to give it a branch to, to cling on to, otherwise it would look too weird. And so I also wanted to give it a bit of a background. So I did a dark blue to sort of pop out those reds even more. And with that, he's basically done. Um, he's looking very weird. I, I would like to see like a forest scene where um, you're looking up at the dark trees and the dark wilderness and all of a sudden one of these guys pop out with their glowing eyes and ears. I think that would be a really interesting um, scene in a, in a game or a movie or something like that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope some of you drew along with me. If you did, feel free to share your drawings to me on Twitter or Instagram or whatever you prefer. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that this is a really good way to design creatures that look a bit more like animals. Uh, I did a that monster design video before, but that was based more on sort of a cartoonish idea of creature design. So I wanted to do something a little bit more natural looking and a little bit more based in reality, I guess. Uh, so yeah, let me know if if you liked the video and if you want me to do any more character design based stuff and uh yeah i'll see you guys next video thank you to my patrons including blep gaia scott peterson weeb ellie quiznack miss misu bb dave Cato cat christy stewart Pinamel, elizabeth albin cal pompon aaron sawicki super pixel rebel b taka de sweet 12 harry kitty cat Isabella Spooky, Lovely, Lachlan MD, Mystic, Enzo Jobert, Yo Boy ST, JJ Jade, Laura Buter, Angela Taylor, Blah Blah Blah, blah and Addy Visual. Thank you guys so much for your support. If you would like to become a patron, there's a link on the end card and in the description box.